Yes, yes, yes. What is good, my people? Welcome back to Computer Music Academy's weekly homework podcast. I am your host, Tashira Say. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening. Welcome to week number 51 of the weekly homework podcast slash assignment. And this is going to be a pretty short week, unfortunately, but I think it'll be very entertaining. So first and foremost, shout out to my man, Ray D., for that intro this is the last week that we'll be using it and to be very honest it's one of my favorite beats by ray d whether it be uh, an intro or a weekly homework assignment submission he's definitely one of my favorite people at cma and i'm happy to have him there and grateful that he let us use that beat anyhow week number 51 so earlier in the season or this year we started uh, a, a new series i would like to say of assignments called mimic and basically i think the saying goes imitation is the best form of flattery or something like that basically i wanted to pay tribute to producers that i feel are worthy and sometimes they're going to be really great names like our man who we did for assignment number one or mimic number one which was timberland and then there's great names that for some reason you never hear people speak about. And that's who we're dealing with today. A gentleman by the name of Rick Rubin. And Rick Rubin to me is definitely one of the best uh, producers in hip hop. He's one of the pioneers of hip hop. I mean, take it, go back in history and you see his his early work with uh, 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 Run DMC and the Beastie Boys and LL Cool J, where he started. And then this dude began to deal with all kinds of people of all different genres. I mean, as of late, <clears throat> excuse me, as of late, he dealt with people like Adele and Linkin Park, and he even did some work with Johnny Cash. And then when you bring it back to the hip hop side, you know, he's worked with Jay Z and Eminem and Kanye West, and he's in my opinion, I don't think I, I've ever heard a Rick Rubin production that I did not like. So that's what we're doing here. We're we're mimicking and honoring Rick Rubin. But unfortunately, there's only two submissions this week. So let's get to them. First and foremost, with my man, Gold007. Let's get it in. Get down. 
Gold 007 doing his thing for week 51. It was a cool beat. It was a cool beat. Definitely not one of my favorites of gold, even though you know I'm a huge gold 007 fan. He has done some incredible things. And it's not to say that it's horrible. It's not. It's just it it I liked the usage of the old school drum machine samples. That was incredible. I can't remember if that was like the DMX or the Fairlight or which one it was, but it's a very well-known old school. Like when somebody's imitating something from the old school, that's like a go-to drum drum machine. So I love the use of that. I love the use of the Joe Jackson uh, stepping out sample. I'm a huge fan of that, of that particular song. It's one of my favorite songs of all time. I love the usage of that. Everything else... It, it it didn't fit together as well as as it probably should have. Like there was the main part of the song, like the verse, and then there was like the hook. And then the hook, there was like a, another guitar sample and the guitar sample. And then there was like a fill in from the drum machine, you know, from the snare and the kick that the sample seemed like it was a little too fast. It didn't fit where it was. Um, and then the actual uh, drum fill in was like out of timing a little bit. And it even had some t some other areas where it feel like it was out of timing. I mean, it's a great attempt. And I, and I hate using that word. Not to say that he wasn't successful at, at, at trying to mimic a, a, an old school Rick Roman beat. I'm not saying that at all. But it just wasn't as cohesive. If that makes sense. It, it, it didn't click all together but definitely i would like bill to go back and 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 if he feels like it and, and mess with it a little bit more and see what you come up with maybe he ran out of time or didn't have enough time and maybe that's the that's the result of that but i definitely think it's a great premise i think it it definitely deserves to be to get to go back to it and retweak it a little bit and see what you come up with but other than that Thank you for the submission. All right, moving on to my man representing Detroit, Michigan. Double negative. Let's go.
double negative. Yes, 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 yes. Double negative doing his thing, wrapping up week 51 of the weekly homework assignment slash podcast. Yeah, I like that. I like I liked a lot about that. <laughs> First of all, the overall beat itself, yeah. When it kicks in, yeah, that's that's definitely head nod. I love the drum samples, I love the sequencing, I love the storm, of course. You know, I, I love just about everything about it. What kind of throws me off or what I think it deserves is definitely a little more variation. You have the main part once again which is probably like the verse and then the second the other part which is the hook nothing wrong with verse hook verse hook verse hook nothing wrong with that but my issue is it's the i'm pretty sure it's the same sample or same loop that he took those chops or whatever it is from and you can kind of tell whereas in the uh the verse it sounds this way, but in the hook, it sounds like it's a little bit shorter and looped a little bit more. And it sounds cool, but realistically, I think it definitely would 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 benefit from having, if not from that same sample, other uh, uh, sample, well, that same song, other samples, or from other songs in general, other samples, and just add to it. Because that's one thing I really loved about Ruben. Back in the day, and occasionally he goes back to that old, old Ruben, where this dude used to take crazy guitar licks and samples and stabs, just bam! You listen to all that old Run DMC, LL, and Beastie Boy stuff. That was incredible. So I like where Double Negative went with that. He definitely got that down. I think it just needed a little bit more variation, just a little bit more. But what I really did appreciate, because he got through most of the song and it was kind of the same thing back and forth. And then he got to that double time uh, part that was really dope towards the end. High quality. Overall, I did like double negative submission and I did like gold 007 submission. So shout out to both of them for actually submitting this week. Enjoyed them both. And thank you for watching, sharing, listening, commenting, and just being a part of what we do every single week. I'm done. We will talk to you next time. See ya.